Hello everybody, this is Jack from tofluency.com. Welcome to this live lesson. Now, you may be wondering where I have been because I haven't really posted on this Facebook page for two or three days. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. First, I'm just going to bring this blind down because things are very bright outside right now to see if <laughs> I have a really, really bright face. Maybe I'm going to move you guys over here a little bit. That's better, isn't it? So yeah, I've been a little bit quiet here recently on Facebook since uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And that's because I have been very, very busy and I wanted just to take two to three days off just to take a little break, you know, start fresh again. Um, and if you're watching live, welcome to you. Thank you for being here. If you're watching the replay, welcome to you as well. Please check the description for notes for this lesson. We're going to talk about a few different things today. We're going to focus on having fun at our party. Now, if you watched one of my recent videos, I talked about throwing a party, okay? So, to throw a party. I also talked about feeling a little overwhelmed because we had so much things, so much stuff to do. Now, to feel overwhelmed means that you feel stressed because you have a lot of things to do. So, we felt overwhelmed and we had a lot of things to do to prepare for this party. I also said in the video, I hope it doesn't rain. I hope it doesn't rain. Um, so we're going to talk about that party soon because it was so much fun. So much fun. Everyone had a great time. Everyone really enjoyed it. But just going to see who is here live. So we have Tran here, Danielli, Mara, Dennis, and I didn't send a notification about this live lesson. I was sitting here, was thinking about making a new video. And I wanted to go live because it's so much fun. So it's Monday morning. Is it still Monday morning? Yeah, it's 11 o'clock on Monday morning. And I'm here at the office. I'm just going to show you around. Um, show you what's happening at the moment. So this is where, if you haven't seen this... This is where I make all my videos and do all my work. So I've been very busy making new videos here. You can see my camera here, my lights over here, the laptop, sorry, the computer, and then my microphone over here. So I love this setup at the moment and it's just great for me to work. Now if you don't know, if you look here, this is standing desk. So I stand up to work. And I made a, a video on this a few months ago, talking about how this is a really, I'm going to move over here. This is like a really positive thing, because when you're standing, you have lots of energy. You know, when you're sitting down, you feel tired and your shoulders start doing this. When you're standing, it just gives you energy. So I really enjoy using this standing desk and I think it's really important as well. And I went through a, a period, a stage, some time, when I was sitting down to work. And I thought, oh, I feel tired again today, I feel tired. But when I'm standing, I have all this energy. So if you're learning English and you start feeling tired, think about standing up or going for a walk, you know, and listening to English while you walk. It's a very um, good thing to do, you know, it's, it's, um, it's such an important thing that, that you can do to help you feel energised and good about learning English. So somebody says, please send me the video. Um, I'm going to put it in the comment section after I finish this live lesson because I can't really type here, I can't send messages. Um, but what I will do is if you, I'll show you YouTube one second. I'm going to um, show you where it is on YouTube. If you go to youtube.com slash to fluency and then 
I'll just show you my channel. Okay, it's this um, video here, throwing a party for English phrases that you will love. I also did this live lesson on Thursday, which was a lot of fun. But in today's live lesson, I'm going to tell everyone about the party. So just as a bit of a background, I'm actually going to sit down for this. I know I said I stand up to work, but I'm actually just going to sit down right now. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a background to give you context. We had a party for my son on Friday, okay? It, it was his third birthday. It's actually his birthday today. So he is three today, but we celebrated his party on Friday. So we decided to have this party at our house. And we haven't thrown many parties before. We haven't thrown a big party at our house because we don't feel like it, it's, it, we were in a good place to throw it. What I mean by that is we had things like poison ivy, which is a plant that if you touch it, it gives you a really big rash and it's really irritable. Great word, irritable. So we had poison ivy in our, in our garden. We also had, <laughs> past tense, a lot of mosquitoes. So many mosquitoes. And we also have two dogs as well who go a little bit crazy around children. Not in a bad way, but in a good way. They're very excited. And when you have three-year-olds and lots of dogs, it can be quite... It's not the best combination. So, anyway, we decided to throw the party, using this again, throw the party, at our house. And we decided to invite a lot of people. When, because sometimes what happens with a party is... You invite a lot of people, but especially with children, children get sick, children get tired, something comes up, okay? Something comes up, something happens, so children can't go to the party. So we decided to invite a lot of our friends. And um, yeah, it went fantastically well. It did rain, but only for a little bit. So we were expecting thunderstorms and we have quite a small space inside but a beautiful large back garden and also here's a couple of great things here. We got rid of the poison ivy to get rid of something and this just means to eliminate poison ivy. So we got rid of the poison ivy. And also, we got rid of the mosquitoes. Someone came to our house and he sprayed this organic spray. So it's not um, pesticide. It's this organic spray. And it did an amazing job. The mosquitoes are gone. They're probably going to come back in a few days. But it was perfect for this party. So we sprayed. We got rid of the mosquitoes, eliminated. We got rid of the poison ivy. We tidied the garden to make it look presentable. And we also got something else which was very exciting. We got a bouncy castle. In the US, they call them bouncy, uh, a bouncy house, I think, in the US. So we got a bouncy castle, huge bouncy castle with a slide massive it was so big and it was so much fun it came at around 4 15 and the party started at five and my son <laughs> my son just went up the stairs down the slide up the stairs down the slide now if you don't know what a bouncy castle is i'm going to show you a picture and i'm going to show you one with a slide as well bouncy castle slide and this was so much fun if you're just joining come say hello into the the chat box um i'm going to show you some bouncy castle okay 
These are bouncy castles. So if somebody came, or this company came, <laughs> that's really funny, and they put up this bouncy castle, and it was something like, it was not a good example, it was something like that, but a lot bigger. Something like that, but a lot bigger. And also, if you're watching live or watching the replay, please click the like button. Um, please press the like button. Let's see if there's another example. Um, yeah, it was something like that, but a lot, a lot, 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 a lot bigger. <laughs> okay, so this is what we had in our backyard. But the thing is, I had to convince the company to bring it for us because there was rain in the forecast and they said, oh, I don't know. I don't know if we can bring it because there's going to be rain. And I said, listen, if we can get one hour of fun, then it, would, it will be worth it, okay? It will be worth it. If we can just get one hour of fun, then it will be worth it. So they brought the bouncy castle. It went up at 4.15. So they put it up at 4.15. And um, the party started at 5. And my son, he just played on it the entire night. And when the guests arrive, he was so hot and sweaty and tired. But then all of our guests arrived. Um, we had so much fun. And there were so many people there, lots and lots of people. So I barbecued. Um, Najib says, how can I invite people here? Um, I don't know. When you're watching live, I'm not sure if you can share the video, but you can post their name into the chat box. So anyone, if you want people to join, just put someone's name, tag them into the comment section. I think that would work. So, yeah, lots of people came. It was a lot of fun. I barbecued, I made um, vegetables, chicken sausages, burgers, some other things as well. We had some other kind of chicken, um, lots and lots of snacks, and it was an incredible party and a lot of fun. And then, when all the children went home, we made a fire and we sat outside drinking tea. Um, so yeah, it was so, so much fun, and um, my son had the best time. Um, hopefully that, that tagging is working for you guys. If not, you can do it after the live lesson. Um, and then on Saturday, we had another party. Okay, we went to someone else's party, and on Sunday, we went to another party as well. So that's why I haven't really been able to post anything on Facebook or make lessons, and I've just been super busy. The other thing is as well, I've been doing things in the background, okay? Now, this means I've not been working on things that are in the public, like a new YouTube video or a new Facebook video, but I've been doing things in the background, like some of the administration, and also making new videos for courses. Okay, so I've been doing a lot of things in the background. So it's been an incredibly busy few days. But now I'm back here. I'm going to put you guys here. Now I'm back um, in the office working. I spent about an hour replying to emails before. And um, it's just good to be back. Let's see, guys, question time. Let's move on to questions. So if you have any questions about what I'm talking about or about learning English, now is your time to ask them. Ali says, what are you talking about, Jack? So I'm talking about my son's birthday party on Friday. If you're just joining, it was a lot of fun. We got a bouncy castle. We had lots of friends come over and it was a huge success. It's a great phrase to say. It's a huge success means it was very successful and we had a lot of fun. Um, and the, the phrases that I used in a different video, throwing a party, now I can say we threw a party. We threw a party. Um, 
I'm glad it didn't rain. So I'm glad it didn't rain heavily. Um, what's another phrase that I used in that in that video? But yeah, we had such a good time. Khaled say, or Najib says, happy birthday. Thank you very much for my son. Yeah, it's his third birthday today. So we're going to celebrate again more parties or a small party. Mara says, how to use the word indeed. There are different ways you can use this, but you can use it as a one word answer. So when you are agreeing with someone, you can say indeed. Um, Marco says, how long have you to study? Not quite sure what you mean. Do you mean how long do you need to study to learn English? Let me know. Um, Ali, thank you so much. Paolo says, how to use the word went? It's the past of go. So to go, in, I can say I go to the gym every day. I don't. I go to the gym every day. I went to the gym yesterday. Just an example. Um, Natalia is a new one here. Thank you, Najeb, for inviting people. Marco says, okay, so how long does it take to reach fluency in English? How long does it take to reach a high level? It really depends. Um, if you're an intermediate learner, then you can reach an advanced level in six months. But this means that you study a lot every day and that you use the right methods. I have something called the fluency equation, and this is the time you spend studying times by the methods that you use. So if you use really good methods and you study all day, you're going to make very fast progress. If you study one hour a week using methods that don't work, you're not going to make progress. Um, Mastan is here. I'm new here and I live in Kurdistan. Good to have you. Um, Natalia, when do you use articles an or a when the next word starts by a vowel? Um, thanks for the welcome message. You are welcome again. <laughs> so yeah, the, when the next sound sounds like a, a vowel, then that's when we use an. And I was actually thinking about this before because I was listening to a podcast and it can be quite difficult to say quickly. When you do something like adventure, we went on an adventure, okay? So this, what we have here is a preposition on an adventure, on an adventure, on an adventure. And people normally speak very quickly and the words link together. We're going to a party, to a, to a, to a, we're going to a party. But when it's something like on an adventure, it's a little bit more difficult. And I heard someone make a mistake when they were talking about this because it can be difficult for native speakers as well. But whenever you have the next word that sounds like a vowel sound, then that's when we use an. What about notwithstanding? How should I use it? Um, that's a little bit more advanced and I can't think of a, a sentence off the top of my head. What I normally do... Whenever I'm looking at, I do this, you see, when I'm looking at explaining videos and explaining phrases, I always just look for examples. Um, but it, it's similar to in spite of the fact or although in spite of. Um, but yeah, have a look. Just have a look at sentences that use this. And then use the sentence method to, to remember and to internalize how to use this word. Um, Oh, great question, Natalia. What about the word university? Is it just a? Um, it's just that the rule is confusing for me. Yeah, and another thing that you can do as well is do a Google search. I'm going to show you. What you can do is this. Sorry, you can't see anything at the moment. So I'm going to share it right now. Okay, I just did a quick Google search. A university or an university? Now search with quotation marks, because what that does is it says it has to be exactly like this. And what you can do quickly is look at the results. 35 million results. Let's do an university, 475,000 results. So we now know that 
It's a, a university. Now, the reason why it's a is because even though it's a vowel that follows, it's not a vowel sound. There's actually a y, a y sound. A, u, u, university. So it's similar to the word u, university. So that's why we're using a, because even though it, there's a vowel that follows it, it's not a vowel sound. So hopefully that makes sense. But whenever you're looking at this, whenever you have those doubts, then do that Google search. Mara says like a unicorn. Exactly. A unicorn. Very good. Um, great example. It's got that Y sound. That's why we have it like that. Um, but yeah, it can be confusing because we don't just look at it that way. Hyatt says, what's the topic about? Um, right now, we're talking about everything. <laughs> so if anyone has a question, then please ask me in the comment section below. But yeah, um, we, we mainly have talked about the party that we threw for my son. We had his birthday party on Friday, and it was, it was so much fun. I personally had a very, very good time. <laughs> a very good time. But the day of the party, okay, the day of the party, so before the party, there was so much to do. So much to do. And we... Um, we managed just to get everything done in time. But we had to do the shopping. We had to clean the house. We had to, you know, arrange for the bouncy castle to come. All these different things. But no, it was so much fun. We had such a good time. Uh, Fatima is here. Good to have you. Um, Leon, you're asking a question that I'm not quite sure. Um, but ju just, it's good just to know, like, you know, exactly how to use it. But yeah, the J and the W is another example of when it, it sounds like, um, it doesn't use the actual vowel sound, but it's got that W or that Y in there instead. And that happens a lot when you're linking words too. Okay, but very good. Um, any other questions about English or about parties or about what we're talking about? Um, Najib says, I don't remember how we use have and had. Um, think about it this way, you know, have is used in the present, had is in the past. Have is in the present perfect, had is in the past perfect. So just think of it in that way. Um, Natalia, you are very welcome. Fatima, I'm glad your lesson is live. Me too. Um, I didn't plan for this lesson. I just decided to do a live lesson. I enjoy them. You enjoy them. And I didn't send a notification. So if you're watching this as a replay and you missed it, sorry about that. But I will send a notification for my next live lesson, which is probably going to be tomorrow. And then also on YouTube on Thursday. I mentioned on the YouTube show, youtube.com slash fluency, that I'm going to do this most likely every Thursday now. So to do my live lesson on YouTube called the Tofluency Show, every Thursday. Now, while we're talking about this kind of thing, um, I mentioned a few weeks ago that I was going to start a new podcast. The first episode, or the, um, the pilot episode, like the, the test episode, is going to come early September. So I'm working on exactly what I'm going to include in the podcast. And I'm going to try and do something different. Not everyone is going to like this. Okay? I don't think everyone is going to like it, but I think it's a lot of fun, and those who do like it will really like it. Let's have a look. Mara asks a great question. Is reading more effective than learning grammar rules for fluency in writing? When it comes to writing, it's good to learn the rules about punctuation and writing styles. Okay, Things like full stops, all these different punctuation rules. Um, it's good to learn them, but a very good exercise here is to read a lot, so reading is going to help you, and then also to copy what you read. Put on some classical music or relaxing music, and then read a sentence, copy the sentence. Read a sentence, copy the sentence. And just do this in a very relaxed way. 
And that will help you make that connection between the reading and the writing in a very natural way. Um, so Leon asked a great question. You are from England and there is an idiom, Billy No Mates and Norman No Mates. By any chance, do you know the origin of them both? This is such a great question. I remember, okay, to be Billy No Mates means that you have no friends. And you know at school, people like to tease other kids. Sometimes it's good fun, sometimes it's mean. Now this Billy No Mates is usually in good fun. And you know, you can call someone a Billy No Mates if maybe they're having lunch on their own, for example. And I think it started from a radio advertisement. I think there was a commercial on the radio that talked about Billy No Mates. And then people just started using it. I think it started when I was about 10 or 11. But yeah, in general, it's used in good fun. I don't know if people still use this now. Um, I'm not quite sure. Evan says, I'm so bad at writing. How can I improve my writing? Yeah, that's something I just talked about it as well. You know, about reading and then copying. Reading and copying. Guys, if you're enjoying this, please click the thumbs up button. Um, got, oh yeah, a way to memorize vocabulary as well. So with vocabulary, two very important things, okay? Learn it in context. So learn it as part of a sentence. If you learn a, a new word, then it's important that you do this as part of a sentence. Even better, part of sentences. So get lots of examples. And then I like to use um, digital flashcards to then repeat them in a very efficient and effective way. And I'll leave a link in the description about this later and you'll be able to read this. Um, Ali says, what about my comment? Maybe I missed it. Could you repeat it again, Ali? Sometimes comments don't always show for me and it's very frustrating for people. So sorry if I miss your comments. Um, Najeb, thank you for being here again. Thank you, Fatima, that's very kind. Uh, I suggest having a lesson about using adverbs to make speaking look more natural. Yeah, th this is a good example. Um, when it comes to adverbs, there are rules that you can follow, but it, it's very difficult to learn how to use adverbs by reading rules because you're just not going to, to learn it. You're going to understand the rules, but you're not going to be able to use them naturally. So the sentence method is perfect for something like adverbs and prepositions because you can take lots of examples and just notice the patterns in a natural way. You, you recognize the grammar and how adverbs are used in a natural way. There are so many rules and so many exceptions. And by going through the rules and exceptions, you're not going to learn them. Okay, so it's important to do that. I don't know how to use another and other. Um, the others. I'll just give you a couple of examples. Uh, uh, I'll just give you a couple of examples. So let's use another. Okay, and I'm just going to use this example. It's very common here. Do you want another beer? So if you are at a restaurant, you're drinking a beer or a glass of wine, do you want another beer? Do you want another glass of wine? That's just a great example to know and to remember. And then look at other examples too. Use the sentence method. You can internalize them. Mario says, first is to write um, and then hear and talk. Yeah, writing is a good, um, is like a good way to help you use your output. Okay, so reading Input, listening, input, writing, output. It's kind of cool. Writing, output. And then that helps you process the sentences and grammar and vocabulary in a way where you can relax about it, where you can check things, where you can take your time. 
And then, once you do that, you can then start speaking and using them easily. So it's a lot easier to do that. Um, Katrina says, so should it be love me tenderly? In this case, yes, love me tenderly. Um, I'm interested, interested to know when you are, are going to use that. Leon from Ecuador, I really enjoy your classes. Would it be possible to have a private conversation later on, please? That's something I just can't do. I don't have time to um, to do that at the moment. I used to offer one-to-one -one lessons, but I, I'm just focusing on other things now. So I can't offer conversations online, um, but there are many ways that you can practice your speaking. Speaking of Ecuador, I was in Ecuador. If you're new here, Leon, welcome. I was in Ecuador in 2007, and I spent probably six, seven weeks there in total, and I met my wife in Ecuador. Um, two things about Ecuador. Firstly, I met my wife. Secondly, I spent about three weeks recovering from typhoid in Ecuador. I think I got typhoid in Colombia, and then I came, went back to Ecuador, and I felt terribly sick. And um, I had to spend three weeks in bed recovering from typhoid. It was a horrible experience. But, you know, I love Ecuador. Ecuador is so much fun. Spent some time in Quito. Um, I didn't go to many places, actually, but Quito, uh, I think Rio Bamba, if that makes sense. And then somewhere else in the south. I can't remember what it's called. Mastan says, can you help me for learning English? Yes. Yes. This is what you're here for. And that's what I'm here for. Now, a good place to start is to get my book to fluency.com slash book. You can currently download this for free. Mara says, what other languages do you speak? I speak Spanish um, quite well. And um, that's it. That's it, really. Oh, I, I say at the moment that I speak British and American English. Because um, I, I do. I understand them both very well. Toral, how are you? Doing great. Feeling fantastic. It's Monday. I'm excited to be here in the office. Um, things are very hectic at home at the moment because my mother-in-law is visiting and she has brought her dog. And her dog, this is a great example of a phrasal verb. Her dog doesn't get on with our dogs. So they have to be in separate rooms. There's a lot of barking and it's too noisy. So it's good to be in the office. Najib says, and a little French. Mm -hmm. Je veux parler un peu de français. I don't know if that's correct or not. And there's, <laughs> there's one phrase that I always remember. Pouvez-vous me dire comment aller à la banque? If you're from France, you know France, let me know if that is good pronunciation. I haven't spoken Fran French for a while now. Jenny is here. Jenny, I recognise you. You've been following me for a long time. I'm watching now. Love to listen to the way you speak from Malaysia. Thank you for being here. Mara says, do you think Americans struggle with understanding the British accent? Yes, they do. This is why I modify my accent so that Americans can understand me. Americans don't understand my name, or when I say my name. They think I say, okay, I'm going to write on the screen actually. So I say, yeah, my name is Jack. And they think that I say this, Chuck. So when I say, hi, I'm Jack, I say, Chuck? Because it doesn't sound exactly like Chuck, but that's what they hear. The reason is the short vowel sound. So they say Jack. It's very open and long. Jack, Jack, Jack. And I say Jack. It's like that. So they think I'm saying Chuck. And then my friend, who is also from where I live, and he lives here in America about an hour and a half away. It's amazing that he's so close. He came to the party on Friday, actually. And he's called Andrew. But people think that he says Andre. Andre. 
Um, so <laughs> it's pretty, pretty funny to, to have that. And we, we talk about that a lot, and it happens a lot. In fact, we were just talking about it, and we went to a bar, and um, someone said, oh, what, you know, where are you from? And we talked about it and said, what, what, what are your names? And I was like, Jack. And he said, Andrew. He says, nice to meet you, Chuck and Andre. It was just so funny. Um, let's go back. Lucas is here. Um, a big hug from Brazil. A big hug to everyone else as well. Um, let's have a look. Is there some kind of skill or magic, I love that, to understand the different contexts of songs, texts, and expressions? Sometimes the contexts are the biggest challenge. We know the meaning of the word, but in a context it changes completely. Fantastic, fantastic question. This is difficult. Context is so important. There's a context of the word in a sentence, okay? There's also the context of the situation. And also, sometimes it just depends on the intonation. So you can say, thanks, and that can be really nasty or really happy. So if I say, you know, for example, thanks, you know, maybe that sounds sarcastic as well. But then you can say, thanks. And that's obviously not a nice thing. You're not actually thanking someone. You're angry at someone. So context is super important and so is intonation. Now, just like I talked about before, you learn words words and phrases through sentences because that helps you learn the context of how the word is used in a sentence. And then get your sentences and your words from context. So, for example, if you're watching Friends and Ross says something to his, um, his wife or Rachel, his girlfriend, and talking about love, then you know this is something that a man says to a woman, okay, when they're in a relationship. Now, if you're also watching Friends and Joey is talking to a kid, then this is a different type of context as well. And that's why grammar books aren't that useful unless they have lots of examples from specific context. I talked about using phrase books as well because that helps you think about the context too. So if you're in a restaurant and you're learning phrases from a phrase book, then you know that you use these phrases in a restaurant. And the more input and practice that you get and the more context you get, the more you'll understand when to use specific phrases. Okay, So it's all about the context, it's so important. You know, I, ha I had a student who went to a language school. It was a two-week intensive course, and they just learned idioms. They learned idioms, okay? But they didn't learn them from context. They didn't learn them from a, a greater situation, okay? And what was interesting is that she learned these idioms but had no idea when to use them. And she tried to use them in classes and they just didn't work because it wasn't the right context. So always learn things in context. That was a long answer. Sorry about that. Um, let's have a look. Jasper says, is it better not to use proverbs in academic writing? Yeah, this is a good question. You know, academic writing is something that is completely different. And what I recommend doing again is reading lots of academic writing. And then, I have to be careful here, copy the style that they use. Obviously, I'm not talking about writing a paper and copy and paste in someone else's answer. But instead, you know, you can use that method I talked about before, where you put on some nice music, the nice atmosphere, and you're reading things, and then you're writing them down. And that will help you with that. Um... Morris says, but you understand them quite well. Yeah, I understand Americans very well now. Um, what thing did you modify your accent in in order to be understandable? So something that I've modified my accent with is the T sound. So someone sent me an email about this today. My wife is called, um, I'm going to say it in the British way first, Katie. But 
In American English, it's kiddy. Kiddy. Different vowel sound. Also, it's the D sound for the T. K T Katie. 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 So you can notice that difference. So when I ask for something now, I usually use that D sound if I'm in a restaurant. When I'm with friends, I don't modify it as much. I also modify vocabulary. So I change the vocabulary that I use. A big example, if I'm asking for french fries, I'll ask for fries. In the UK, we call them chips. So lots and lots of different ways. Hiya has a question, is it better to study English through American or British one? Um, I made a video on this. The conclusion is it all depends on you and your future goals. And for fun, learn them both. It's great fun. Uh, speaking of fun, Natalia, what's the difference between fun and funny? This is one of the biggest mistakes people make um, as Spanish speakers, okay? So if you're a Spanish speaker, you might get confused between fun and funny. So fun just means something is enjoyable. So we had a lot of fun at the party. We enjoyed the party. This is going to be a lot of fun. We are going to enjoy this. But funny is ha 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 ha. Or in Spanish, ja 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 ja. <laughs> so that is funny when you laugh. If something's funny, people laugh. It can also mean a little bit strange. For example, my dog is acting funny today. He's not himself. He's acting a little bit strange. But on the most part, we use it when we're talking about laughing at something. That was a funny film. It made me laugh. That was a fun film. It was enjoyable. Hopefully that helps. Um, Katarina says, yes, intonation can change a sentence completely. Um, Natalie says, I see a very well-structured discourse. Are you a linguist or something similar? No, I'm not a linguist. I'm just very interested in um, teaching English, learning languages, and language acquisition. So, um, yeah, really enjoyable for me. Um, hi, Jack. How are you feeling today? What's the difference between funny and lol? <laughs> so, lol just means laugh out loud. And this is something, apparently, that's not as common as it used to be. Um, people are just saying ha-ha instead of lol. Hello, I'm Jasper from Taiwan. Your teaching is amazing. Jasper, thank you so much for being here. If anyone is watching this and you're enjoying it, give me a heart or a thumbs up and then please share this after the lesson. Leon says, is it true that people who... Sorry, excuse me. Is it true that people who speak BBC or received pronunciation are more intelligent? Um, no, it's not true. Accents can be deceiving. Accents can be deceiving. It's a great uh, little phrase. People think I'm super intelligent just because of my accent, and that's just not true. <laughs> but no, what, what I mean by that is Americans say that the British accent sounds more intelligent. Um, it's just one of those things, but it's not necessarily true. Cool, everyone. Abu has a question that has going to go, but any recommend recommendations to get my students to start speaking in English? Yeah, if it's a group setting, then um, make it easy for them to answer questions and have them firstly answer questions that are one word answers. So then they just get over that initial response to start speaking. And then obviously think about making the lesson interesting, making topics interesting. And if you're speaking one-to-one -one with them, then you can help them as well. Hadil, is it, uh, is it a long time to have you? So it's been a long time. It's been a long time. Yeah, I was explaining how I haven't been on here for a little while um, since Thursday because I've had a super busy week, um, weekend. Okay, I'm going to go now. I think I'm going to go live again tomorrow. If you have signed up for notifications then I will send you an email tomorrow. Today was a spontaneous live lesson. 
okay? And this just means I did it without planning. I was just on my phone and I thought, ah, I will go live. Jasper says, does it matter having an American accent in IELTS? I think it depends on where you take it. But from all the examples that I've had, um, I'm, to be honest, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it makes a difference if you have an American accent. My personal like, initial response would be, no, it wouldn't matter. But maybe just do a search. Do a quick search on Google and say, um, does it matter if I have an American accent with IELTS or American accent IELTS and see what happens. Um, Renats is here, good to have you. And Najib's here, did you get your whiteboard in the office? I did. It's over here. It's kind of cool. I can't show you, it's a little bit confidential right now, what I've written on there. But it's like, um, it's paper on the wall. So it's a little bit different. It's, um, it's very cool. Okay, everybody, please share this with your friends. Tag people to invite them and just click the share button and share it in your groups, wherever you are. If you're on YouTube, then welcome to you. Check the description. Okay, everybody, I'm going to have to go now. Um, see you guys later. Have fun.